Okay, today I'm going to be looking at uh, Archives 2, which is the Netflix config solution. Um, it's pretty amazing. I highly suggest you check it out. Um, and we're just going to do a little hello world here, load some application properties off the class path, and uh, some external some external config will pull for that as well. Okay, I've just set up a little Maven project, Java 8. Um, I've copied the Archives 2 core dependency from Maven Central and a little bit of logging here, but that's not that's not important. Important thing is this, Archives 2 core dependency. Um, you don't need to copy in the Archives 2 API because that is a transitive dependency within this Archives 2 core. <clears throat> and this is literally all you need. Okay, so to get started, we're just going to load this application.properties, this app.properties here. Okay, um, I put in two little properties here, a, a boolean and a string, a feature flag and a feature description. Okay, so let's get it loaded. What we need is a config object. And we need the default config loader. And a builder, and build it, and make a new loader, and then we're going to load. This default loader is expecting a dot properties file, so we don't need to supply it with uh, app.properties. App is just enough. Okay. Control Shift O, I need to throw a config exception. We'll just throw it, it doesn't matter. Okay, and that'll load our properties file for us. Now what we need to do is get a property factory, and we'll use the default property factory, to actually load our properties. So we need to attach a config to it. Default property factory dot from config easy and that's it now we can just start now we can just start printing out the configs system dot out dot print i uh, factory dot now the what it says on the actual github documentation the github readme for the 2.0 branch of Archaeus says to use this get property and that returns a property container and it'll work but if you actually look at the source code for the version that I'm using which is the most recent version as of now which is 2.3.2 .2, released uh, in May 2018 you'll notice that it returns a property container which is now deprecated and if you try to get a property from it as boolean Feature flag is a boolean. Uh, I'll just give it a basic false. There, deprecated. All of these methods within the default property container. Ooh, is this new? This is a different one. Uh, all right, yeah, deprecated. Property container deprecated. Default property container deprecated. And the property container, yeah, everything in here deprecated. So I guess the documentation says to use all this stuff, but it's all deprecated now. It also says, you know, you can add a listener. Add listener, deprecated. Uh, yeah, add listener deprecated as boolean deprecated property container deprecated. So I guess just don't use it anymore. But instead, we're going to use this this get function. Get feature flag. We know it's a boolean. Okay, and then we're going to just get dot get. This uh, factory dot get returns a property object, I believe. Yeah. And we just, you know, the property object has a get and a get key. And we just can use a get to get the value. We'll do the same here for our feature description. But we know that is a string. Okay. And when we run that, our property should be displayed. There we go. 
true class path description. Simple. Simple as that. Look how little code that was. It's pretty much as easy as Spring, to be honest with you. So it's definitely worth checking out. Now, one of the major benefits of Archaeus is uh, dynamic polling of config and updating, so you don't have to actually uh, restart your app or microservice whenever you want to update a little bit of config, maybe update some feature flags, turn some features on and off. Perfect Archaeus is for that. So let's just demonstrate that now. I will comment this out. We'll come back to it in a bit. Another config object. Uh, let's, you know, let's just call it config again. Doesn't matter. Uh, and this time we're gonna we're gonna actually load configs from an external location. So I've got just on my computer here on my VM, home, sleeper, Netflix, and I'm gonna create a a property file. Let's just call it config.properties this time. For now we're just going to copy and paste these configs in. Paste. Let's change this to false. And let's change this to external. Okay, and what we need for dynamic polling, we need the polling dynamic config. I think that's right. I'll soon see. Yeah, and that's going to take two. That's going to take two uh, constructor arguments. The first is going to be a config reader, and we're going to use a URL config reader. And that is going to take in a string, which is essentially the location and protocol, the protocol and location of your config file, just HTTP or file or whatever it is. And the second is going to be our polling strategy. And we're going to use the fixed polling strategy. And we want to poll, for the purpose of this demo, every second. Dot seconds. So every one second, we're going to poll it. Okay, we need to supply our the config location there. So I copy this here. It's going to be a file. Paste that. And I called it, what do I call it? Config.properties. You don't actually have to call it dot properties here. This For this particular uh, config, you can call it whatever you want. You're not required to call it dot properties. Okay. And let's start that again. And there we go. False external description. Um, and we just loaded a co uh, external properties file. Again, really, really simple. Um, yeah, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you try it out? It's really easy. Okay. But the real power of um, Archaeus is dynamic polling and updating of configs without having to restart your service, as I said. Um, so it's going to poll, but thread main just exit straight away and our program stops so we need to trap thread main in a while loop so i can demonstrate this polling to you okay uh, we're gonna do a system dot out dot print line we're just gonna have a little separator and then we're gonna have a thread sleep we're gonna sleep for five seconds It'll be a bit too long, we'll see. Okay. Uh, throw an interrupted exception. That's fine, doesn't matter. There we go. So every five seconds it's going to print out our config. Now, what we can do is going to be polling for changes every second. And every time it detects a change, it'll, it'll update our map. Wherever that's stored. I'm not sure actually where it's stored in the factory or the config object itself. I'm not too sure. I could just look at the source code now, but that'll waste a lot of time. Okay, so if we just change something now, change this to true, we will see it update. There we go, true. It updated on the fly. No need to change, uh, restart the service or anything. It just it just pulls every seconds, updates the map for you, and there we go. And if we try it with external description, uh, external changed. 
whoops. Here we go. External changed. Simple. How easy is that? Now, again, on the documentation, Netflix does recommend that you add a listener for bookkeeping purposes. If we try to do that now, we'll get our feature flag. And again, it's a Boolean. If we try to add a listener, if you notice, deprecated. It's deprecated. So what isn't deprecated is a subscribe function, which presumably this is what you're supposed to use now. Although that's not documented at all. The documentation for uh, version two is non-existent practically. So everything I know is just by going through the source code. Okay, so we're gonna implement a consumer here. Uh, property change to, and then plus P. I think it should be a by consumer personally. I, I, for bookkeeping purposes, I don't know why this is not a by consumer. But what do I know? Okay, let's run this. Let's change it just to external. And I'll pick up that change. No, oh, I didn't change the feature flag. I've only got, I've only subscribed to the feature flag. So it's not gonna tell me if, uh, it's not gonna tell me if I've changed the uh, description unless I actually implement the consumer for it. Okay, change that to false. Okay, property change to false. And then I'll print out false. It's simple. And let's see what happens now if I actually comment out one of these. Okay. Probably change null now it's printing out null. Okay. Maybe that's not the type of behavior you want. Perhaps you want to uh, uh, load a external config. Pull it for changes, but if there's no config in it, then maybe you want to default back to maybe the class path or maybe some other configuration source. So let's uh, implement that now with a composite config loader. So we'll load our external config and that'll have priority over our class path config. Okay. So let's do that now. And what we need is a default composite loader. I think that's right. Is it? No. Default composite config. Ah, oh, yeah, we go. We have a builder, and that will give it a config, which is going to be external. External config, and we're just going to shove our config in there. Okay. And then we're gonna tack on the class path config. This here. We're gonna shove that in there. Tidy it up a little bit. And then we're gonna build. Build. Import that. Okay. And now we've got a composite config. Okay, so it's going to load this external properties file and that's it's going to load up both properties file and it's going to merge them together and it's going to merge the configs together but this external is going to override this and the way you know that it's going to override is because we've declared it first year with config this is the first one. It's going to override all the ones that come after it, basically. That's for what I gather. That's how it works. Okay. So if we launch it now, if we have a look at our external properties, this is commented out. So that's not going to display anything, but this is set to true. 
So what I expect to happen now is going to print out true because it's got it's going to bring in this feature flag, merge it together with this feature description of external. So we're going to have true and external. There. True, external. And if I change this back to false, dynamically updated, property change to false, false. And there we go. And if I get rid of this feature description, it's going to default back to the class path description. I don't have a consumer, uh, I don't have a, con a subscriber for that, so, but it has changed. Class path desk. Really, really simple. Uh, so that's uh, just a little hello world. Um, next episode, I'm going to go through uh, cascading strategies and the actual proxy factory, which is actually quite really fun. Um, so thank you very much.